Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or even good evening, whatever the case may be, depending on the time of your participation in this session with me. Welcome once again to the Department of Value Education. And I am Sir Gregory Karum Noid, feeling really very happy to be with you at this time. And before we proceed further, allow me to ask you one or two questions. All right? Don't worry, they are not difficult questions, very, very easy. Do not be scared. The first question is How are you feeling today? And the second question is Did everything go as you had planned? today well for some of you yes everything went off well while for some others no things didn't go as you had expected things didn't go as you had planned no problem you may be wondering why is sir asking such silly questions it is because I want to connect you to the topic of today's discussion, today's reflection together, which is the 90-10 principle. This principle had been propagated and popularized by this great author, Stephen R. Covey. And I'm sure some of you would have read his book, this book that is on your screen right now, the seven habits of highly effective people. Let us understand together about this principle. Let us discover more about this principle. And I assure you that it will change the way we live our life from today onwards. I am sharing this from my personal experience, at least for me, from the time I had started living life through this principle, my happiness level has increased by leaps and bounds and I was able to live life more fully and also became in the process much happier. And I have shared this principle also with students, then other people in different spheres and their feedback has always been very very positive and even some of our former students used to get back to us telling that the 90-10 principle has really enabled them to cope with life much better. I hope and pray that this will be the same for you as well. So let us go ahead and understand more, understand better about this principle. What is it actually? It is nothing but 10% of life is made up of what happens to us. Fine. What happens to us in life makes up just 10%. And 90% of life is decided by how we react or how we respond to the 10% to those situations that happen to us and we really have no control over the 10% whether we want them or not whether we like them or not these 10% will just keep happening in our life these situations will keep take uh, will keep taking place in our life Fine. We have no control over the 10%. Uh, let us just brainstorm together. Just bring out those um, situations or events that you feel are beyond your control and they keep happening in your life or in the life of your um, uh, loved ones, in your family situations, etc. Things that you are not able to control they keep happening they keep taking place in your life 
let's just brainstorm together try to bring them into your mind yeah i can feel that some of you are saying uh, about the weather surely we cannot control the weather it is beyond our control yeah some others are saying it is accident true some others are saying about sicknesses surely for example like the pandemic that we are experiencing right now and uh, some others are saying it's about death the loss of our loved ones fantastic very good is true we cannot stop the car from breaking down you are making a trip somewhere having a pleasure ride or having to travel somewhere very very urgently and suddenly your car breaks down we have no control it just happens and then when you plan to go on a journey or on an errand the conveyance may be late the taxi is late the buses are late or the train or even the flights are late and it throws the whole schedule off it spoils our plans or in other the cases in some other cases we are in a hurry for an extremely important event say for example a job interview or a very very important meeting business engagements etc and you are caught in this this is very common in towns and cities especially and then also sometime we make plans we spend days on and to plan for a program for an event and suddenly on that particular day there is lightning and thunder storms and heavy downpour you we have no control over this this forms just 10% of our life the other 90% is different in that we determine this 90% we have the power to decide what this 90% is what this 90% should be how do we um, have the power how is it that these 90% is under our control by our reaction to the 10% that we have no control fine see for example we cannot control a traffic police from signaling us to stop when we reach that junction we want to just cross in a hurry however he signals us to stop we have no control over his hand stopping us from moving ahead however we can control our emotions our reaction to his action we cannot control the weather however we can control our reaction to the weather and more importantly we cannot control other people's mood other people's tongue other people's opinions about us but we can control our reaction to other people's action let's use this example uh, suppose i'm having breakfast with my family and then suddenly my daughter runs carelessly and knocks over the cup of tea or the cup of coffee onto my pants imagine if it were hot coffee or hot tea what would happen <laughs> do not imagine too much of course yeah and then you know i have no control over what has just happened the tea has spilled the the coffee has spilled what happens next will be determined by how i react to what is what has happened to me i yell 
I curse, I shout, I scold my daughter for knocking the cup over. And in anger, in the process, my daughter gets frightened, seeing daddy so angry, she breaks down in tears. That is a natural reaction of the child. And after scolding my daughter, I turn to my wife and criticize her for placing the cup too close to the edge of the table. And I might say, why are you so careless? Why can't you keep the cup at the middle of the table? And a short verbal battle follows. Naturally, my wife would not simply take it. She won't just say, I'm so sorry, I should have kept it at the middle of the table. No, she would retort, she would give back to me. Can't you do it by yourself? If you see the cup or at the edge of the table, can't you keep it on the, on the, at the middle of the table, etc. And then big fights will take place. India-Pakistan war. Then in anger, can I storm into my bedroom, bang the door and change my pants. Then in the meanwhile at table, my daughter has been too busy crying to finish her breakfast. <laughs> See, she has even changed her face. <laughs> and in the process, she is late to get ready for school. And uh, naturally, she misses the school bus. I have no choice but to rush to my car and drive my daughter to school. Because I am late, I try to overtake left, right and center. And uh, I am caught by the police. After an argument, the policeman says, either 500 rupees or let us go to the police station. Well, I have to shell out 500 rupees there and then. Then, when we reach the school, my daughter just runs into the school without even saying goodbye. On other days, she would just wave and say, bye, papa. And I would happily say, bye, darling, see you in the evening, etc. But at this time, she is sulking. She is still angry with me. Then, I rush to office, arriving at office 20 minutes late. And as luck would have it, I realized that I left an important file at home. And my work for that day depends all on that file. See, my day started very badly. As it continues, it seems to get worse and worse because I get scolding in turn. I get, I, I mean, my superiors, my boss grumble because I had left a file at home and things are not um, getting done. So I feel terrible and I long to reach home. And when I arrive home, instead of smiling faces, I am welcomed by two frowning faces. They have not forgotten what happened in the morning. They have not forgiven me. Why? Why does these things happen? Why has so many things happened? So many, let's say, um, not so good things happened that day. It's all because of how I reacted in the morning. Why did I have a bad day? Did the tea cause it? Did my daughter cause it? Or was the policeman the reason for my bad day? Or option D, did I cause it? The answer is obvious. I caused it because I had no control over what happened with the tea or with the coffee. And how I reacted in those five seconds is what caused my bad day. Let's take another scenario of what could and should have happened. Tea splashes over me. My daughter is frightened. She is about to cry because she realized that she has made a terrible mistake. And 
I gently say. Let's see, what would you say if you were the father? What would you say to your daughter at that moment, looking at her frightened and about to cry? Yes, you gently say, it is okay, honey, but you just need to be more careful next time, okay? Do you think your daughter would cry? No, she would feel so much relieved, even if she, she has started crying, even if the tears started uh, falling out, uh, falling down, they, they would go back inside the eyes because the father is so kind and when, he, when I hug her, when I console her, she feels safe and she feels um, um, confident that she would not get a scolding. See, then grabbing the towel, I go to my room and change my pants. I grab my file and then I go to see my daughter getting onto the bus. She turns and waves, bye papa. And in turn I say, bye darling, see you in the evening. And everything's fine. Off I go to the office. I arrive five minutes early and then I cheerfully greet my colleagues and friends there. Notice the difference? Surely, two different scenarios. Both started the same way but ended differently. Why? Because of how I reacted. See, really I have no control over 10% ten, of, over ten of what happens in my life. Again, I reiterate, the other 90% is de determined by my reaction. Let's see some ways to apply the 90-10 principle. Because as I had mentioned at the beginning, if you really take this principle to heart, if you try to put this principle into practice, I assure you that your life will not be the same. Your relationship with others will not be the same from today onwards. See, because someone says something negative about you, someone criticized you or someone make, uh, uh, someone makes, a, um, let's say, uh, negative comments about you, do not be a sponge. You know what a sponge is? A sponge is that material that absorbs water and in the process it becomes wet and heavy. And sometimes we tend to be like a sponge we absorb whatever people say about us, their gossips, their negative opinions, and in the process, we become heavy and we lose our peace of mind. We lose that energy and enthusiasm and we feel um, terrible. And in the process, we can't go ahead performing our task and uh, doing our duties in the best way possible because we have been dragged down by other people's opinions and comments about us. We have no control over what they think or what they say about us. Instead, if we can be like a, like a, a duck's back, it will be wonderful. No amount of water will be able to wet a duck's back. You may pour a thousand liters of water on a duck it will never get wet but of course it may die out of cold or maybe because of the pressure of the water but it won't get wet similarly let's make an effort not to have to let the negative comments affect us react positively and it will not ruin your day See, because a wrong reaction could result in losing your peace of mind. A wrong reaction could, losing, uh, could result in, in, the, in our being frustrated. We, we lose that enthusiasm, that drive, and we spend so much of time and energy trying to react negatively or even um, return like for like to those who have given negative comments or who have uh, gossiped about us. A wrong reaction could result in losing a friend, a loved one. And also, a wrong reaction 
could result even in being fired, in being kicked out from a group or from, um, um, let us say, from our job. See, how do you react when you are caught in a traffic jam? Just an example. You are in a hurry, either you are driving or you are uh, uh, traveling in other vehicle. How do you react when you are caught in a traffic jam? We see some people yell and scream, shout and use all the, let's say, choice words in the dictionary. And some even have their blood pressure go up. Or we can also be, I mean, take it as it comes. What if you are a few minutes late? Why let cars ruin your day? listen to some music or maybe even comb your hair or do like this gentle lady is doing <laughs> okay see you feel you are there are situations when you feel you are trying your best you have put in your best and yet you are being criticized for not making enough efforts why have headaches and take on your frustrations on others and if you really have tried your best, if you have put so much of an effort into doing something and yet the result is not as good as you expected, just tell yourself, I have done what I could. I have tried my best. So no matter what other people say or what their opinions are about me, I just continue to have inner peace. Can our grumbling, cursing or crying change the weather or others' mood or the situation? Like for example, the terrible situation that we are undergoing these days. No, it can't change. But we have the power to determine the 90% that is our reaction to each and every situation that uh, happens in our life. Let's not lose sleep and get irritated over some things that are beyond our control. Let's use our time and energy rather productively. And something will certainly work out, you know.
Remember that this 90-10 principle can be applied in every situation, maybe in your relationship with your mom, with your dad, in your relationship dealings with your brothers and sisters, with your friends, with your colleagues and so on and so forth. Try to put this principle into practice, I assure you, you can go with life better. Thank you and all the best in your effort to live by the 90-10 principle. God bless you.